Welcome. This is Melinda Barlow, CZT, Certified Zen Tangle Teacher. And I saw this cutest post from my cousin on Facebook, and I just had to share it. It, And I jotted it down on on um, my little Dentangle card that I was coloring on. I used chalk and I smeared it all over, but you'll kind of see. Here's the quote. It says, Sunflowers follow the sun, but did you know? When it's a cloudy day, they face each other and share their energy. And I thought that was absolutely wonderful. We've been so confined lately that we kind of need to face each other and, and share our energy. So today we're going to do two tangles that uh, one is called Sunflower and it is, you see it from the back, and um, the other one is called Spiral Leaves and I did it so it kind of looked like a sunflower so that they kind of look like they're facing each other. And so I'm going to draw it on my little template here um, so that you can get an idea of, you know, I'm going to draw them a little larger than I, well, you can, I could do them about this size, but I am going to do them a little larger so they fit in this space. Now the secret to this is you must do the one that is facing away. So we're going to do, it's called Sunflower by Ola Abramova. And you know how I am with names, so. And this one I got off of PatternCollections.com. So you can look up the step outs there for sunflower. And so we're just going to start out and I'm going to bring my sunflower kind of from down here and I'm going to come up and I'm going to draw a little fescue. I'll come in as soon as I draw the other side. Then I'm going to come right up next to that. And I'm going to end it just a little short so that it's just a tad shorter. And the reason for that is that I want it to look like it's facing a certain direction. So now I'm going to aura this with a little heart shape. And then put another little, oh, I call those um, little teardrop. It's not what I call them, but that's what we'll call it today. And now we're going to just do kind of a, just a very wiggly line around that. Then I'm going to come up and do another one that sort of auras that wiggly line. So I kind of get an aura on it. And I think this is fairly simple to draw. Then we're going to just draw some lines coming out. And this kind of will determine how big your little sunflower is going to be. And they can be straight. I usually do them straight, but sometimes they get a little curve in them because that's just what happens to me. And now I'm going to come back after I do that and I'm going to connect with that little bracket. So this connects. And if you don't come all the way, you can see I have a little tiny piece sticking out there. That is perfectly fine because you can just come back and connect it up. So I'm going to show you again so I can start down here and say I didn't connect. I still have that little piece right there. I can connect it up. And I'm just going to go around drawing these little brackets, shapes, and you kind of turn it to the best position for you to draw. And I'm hoping I don't, I still have 
a bunch of chalk on me. I put my hand down on that one and realized it, that the chalk had not it smeared. So I'm going to use something different on here because I don't like things to smear when I'm working on them. I, I have a hard time with even graphite because it smears. So now we have that the back of that sunflower kind of um, drawn and I'm going to come back in and, and you have a choice. I like to just put a line up the center and I like to kind of lift my um, pin as I come to the end so it kind of tapers off and doesn't leave a, a a really sharp point it just kind of tapers off and you can do just the one or you can come back in and add another one from that same spot kind of little veins that kind of come out from your flower and they don't have to be in every one and we're going to come back and do some little embellishment on this one after we get the next one drawn because I want it to kind of look like it's underneath. So now we're going to draw our, it's called spiral leaves. And I've just kind of tweaked it just a little bit. So if you look it up on uh, patterncollections.com, you're going to see that I've tweaked it just a little bit. I'm going to you'd think I'd know so you see where that one's located I'm going to do the next one right about in here and so I'm going to just start with a little circle so I've just drawn a little circle we'll come in so you can kind of see that a little better and then I'm going to draw a small leaf shape and then I'm going to do a spiral that comes around and connects there. So it kind of starts here, comes around and connects. But then I'm going to come over here and draw another leaf shape. And then a spiral that comes around. And then I'm just going to continue around my little spiral. with my little leaves or I'm saying they are um, petals on my sunflower so now I'm going to stop there I'm not going to do another spiral but I'm just going to keep going around on my sunflower or my spiral leaves and I'm just going to keep adding you know how those on a sunflower there's usually several layers of petals so I'm just going to continue to draw and mine get just a tiny bit bigger every time so those center ones are fairly small. And I'm, I'm rotating. I'm rotating my tile or my a template as I go. And I'm just going to do it right. So my, it comes out kind of right over my words. And I want to do enough petals that it looks like they are facing each other.
Okay, and there I am finished. Now I'm going to come back in here and do the same thing with a little line coming up. Just trying to figure out about where my, um, my center might be. So on each one of those leaves you're going to get a little stroke. I think I got them all. Oh, there's one. And you can come back in and add more strokes if you want. You can give them, you know, another. But you don't have to. And now I'm going to draw my stem that's coming out from behind. of my other one so it just has a little stem coming out. Now for me it needs some embellishment so I'm going to color this very center in a little darker because I and I think I'm going to just do a little striping just to give it something because it is Zentangle and so it it doesn't have to be look just like a sunflower we're just tangling we're giving the illusion here of a, a sunflower but it needs a little bit more so I'm going to also come back in here and on the back side I'm going to round off on these very back leaves I'm just going to do a little rounding right here to give it some some depth so round it and everyone will have their own Nicole did some um, little circles yeah can you believe I'm not doing circles and um, just to give it a little bit more depth and then I'm going to come back over here and do the same thing so that this back one you know we have that same kind of depth on this one where we just round off that section right there I'm trying to be very careful that I um, fill in well and then I let you see the tip of my pen I've been so terrible on some of my videos and I so apologize but when you're learning I'm getting better and better at them I think so there we've got a little bit more depth in the fact that um, we have those tangles now we can do a little poke leaf on here so I'm going to do, do a little stem and I'm going to do a little poke leaf just coming off that one's kind of wobbly just to give it um, something a little bit more so it has a little bit more growth to it we can do poke leaf here you know that just kind of adds a little bit to this tangle and sometimes I like to come in and I like to just thicken up my lines a little bit to give it a little bit more depth so I just maybe thicken up this line just a little bit here on one side They don't always have to be this really thin little line. You can um, darken them up. Now, I'm going to color mine because I like color. And I am going to use my Prismacolor pencils. 
and I am using a um, sunburst yellow and sand. Let me see, I think I have one more color that I really wanted to use in my Prisma color. Yes, this one is lemon yellow. I'm going to use these three different yellows and blend. Um, when I first did it, I used a little orange, but I wasn't sure I liked the orange, but And I'm going to blend it. The reason I'm using my Prisma color and not chalk or um, watercolor is I have more control over a template. And I can, um, I'm going to probably add some green also to this. But I can blend it with my odorless paint thinner. So I'm just going to come in here and add some color. And I'm going to overlap some of these and blend them in. So we're just going to add color right around this little um, base on the back. And I started out with sunburst yellow. And then I'm going to pick out my a little lighter color of yellow. And you can see I'm just being that like that first grader color. I and you're going to see how blending with the odorless paint thinner really makes a difference. And I'm just using my um, different colors. This one is a sand, and I'm just layering down. I'm not really. Um, really too concerned about how I'm putting that color down. Okay, and now I'm going to take my um, shading stump and oh, my little thing's kind of dried up. Let's see if I got one that isn't dried up. I see my odorless paint thinner right here, so yeah, they're probably both pretty dried up. Sometimes I'm not really good about um, making sure the lip... So if you know, I use Mona Lisa Odorless Paint Thinner. And it is... I'm going to look tell you what the ingredients really is so that you can... Um, it's mineral spirits. 100% odorless mineral spirits. I'm going to come in on that so you can see. If you do not live in um, the United States or where you can get this, you just look for mineral spirits, and they're odorless mineral spirits. And I like to fill my little um, my little pot. It has a, a little sponge in there, and I just put a little bit in there on my sponge so that it soaks it up and then if I remember to put my lid on it doesn't dry up because it will evaporate so now I'm just going to wet my older my shading stump and you can see it changes the color of your shading stump and then I'm just going to blend and I think I had a little bit of um, graphite on there. It changed it the color a little bit when I first started out. I didn't notice that it, I had that, but that's okay. It will, there's no mistake in Zentangle, only opportunities. So I'm, and when it doesn't feel like it's blending anymore, I just wet my shading stump down and I just blend these. And I like to, I use a little circular motion and just blend. Add a little. So I blended that and and I like to let them dry just a little bit before I add another real contrast color like 
if I'm going to add some green in here. Oh, this is chalk. Don't you just love it when you pick up the wrong pencil? So, we'll come back to that after I picked up the, I set my chalk pencils over here and my Prisma colors over here and I picked up the wrong pencil. So we're just going to come back in here and do the same on this side and see what we can get. So we might want to, you know, do a little bit more um, individual on this side. I might want to come back in and add a little bit more color there. Sometimes I'll just add the color up here in the tip and then blend down. So we'll show you what that looks like. And if your black is not all the way dried, it will um, blend that black Prisma, I mean that black um, pen. So you just have to kind of make sure that it's dry. But you can see what we're going to get. And just, just by, and I can come back in here after this dries a little bit and add a little bit more, you know, color in here and then blend again. So I just kind of play with it until I like it. And then when it's completely dried, I like to come back in and I'm going to use um, a my apprentice pen. And I'm just going to put some little dots. And the reason I'm using my apprentice pen is because I would tap that end right down in. And uh, now I'm going to also do a little shading. I want a little color on my on the outside here. And I'm just going to take a so you can just take your let's see how And I'm just going to add a little red and blend it out. And you can see how that's going to just give that highlight underneath there. And I didn't want it to be black. I just wanted it to be a little bit different color and blend it out. I'm going to continue to do this and then come back and show you the completed um, project when I'm done. But I am going to stop filming and then come back and show you the completed project. You know what I decided I would just speed up this part of it. And I'll need to get another shading stump that is, I clean mine off with a, a, a emery board. So I have a little pile of them that are clean, you know, that are I, I use and then I clean them off. This is just a little, I might come back and put a little 
dark in there if I don't particularly like that. Yeah, maybe I, I'm not real fond of what that looks like. But you can always, you know, there, like we always say, there's no mistake in Zentangle. So I'm going to come back in with a cool gray. Because I really don't want a... Um, graphite and that gives that a, a little a little color that just maybe a little bit better than what I was thinking and oops we better get the right blending stump as I look in my um, In my video, what what's on my paper is always way different than what's, you know. But anyway, there we have, and I would say I I would want to do. See, I added that little green right there. I'm going to come back in with my Prisma and add some green in here. And again, I'm going to need oh. There's one with green on it. This is kind of squished down. I probably pressed too hard. And that's pretty bright green. So to tone that down a little bit, I might add a little gray to it. Just to tone it down. And then blend with my stained gray. But there we have our um, sunflowers and now I'm going to take my um, my my this is dried and now I'm using my apprentice pen or an 05 or a PN anything that is not an 01 you don't want to do an 01 with this like this because it will um, it will just crush that tip. So I just like to add a, these little tiny dots in here that kind of add it a little um, interest to it. Let's see if I can come in so you can see those little dots. And you can see those little tiny dots in there. And you can really come in and just play with this and enhance it. And uh, just have fun. Those are two really fun tangles. Thanks again for watching. And don't forget to put your lid back on your odorless paint thinner. It does evaporate. I'm putting it on both. But I could come in and add a few more sunflowers or spiral leaf just to give it some some fun or I could put a border on here it's lots of fun thanks again for watching and have a great day